Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alessio Balzini from the University of Pisa and School Superior Santana. As, and as I have seen yesterday from the question times, uh, there was some interest in uh, how to the possibility of adapting the SCAD deadline parameters uh, by the resource requirements. So uh, the topics I'm going to introduce you is the case of soft real-time periodic tasks. I underline the, the word soft because in case of hard real-time, uh, things are much more hard to, uh, <laughs> to be developed. And in particular, I will focus on how to do this stuff. Uh, I take as an example the multimedia application, uh, in particular on uh, audio and uh, uh, video production applications, where the problem is to find the correct trade-off on the usage of resources, just to don't spend resources you don't need, and uh, to provide uh, a good quality of service. Mm, to solve this problem, I developed uh, a set of tools that dynamically uh, adjust the schedule and parameters. Uh, so what we have in a software time uh, application uh, is um, what we want is uh, to have uh, an ideal situation like in the first picture uh, where um, we have a periodic task, of course, but uh, uh, where the computational time is required in an ideal world is always constant. Uh, but in the real world, uh, we have some jitter between the uh, several jobs. So uh, to provide you uh, the proof of this concept, uh, I performed some measurements on uh, different uh, uh, movies with different codecs. So for instance, here we have an uh, MKD, a Matryoshka um, codec. Here we have uh, an AVI uh, example, and here an MPEG4 example. So we can see that uh, there is a lot of jitter between the different activations. What? Uh, SCADATEN, now you know perfectly. Uh, what SCADATEN provides is this set of uh, three parameters. But are these parameters really what the user expects? Could you please go back to the previous slide? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem to be actually a big variation here. It's almost nothing. Uh, 4.15 and 4.18. Yeah, but at that point, uh, there is uh, a lot of variation. There is a lot of noise. Yeah, okay. I mean, here the difference between the worst case and. Anyway, okay. It was quite more evident in the Matrioska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going 1%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what does it mean? Yeah, maybe this. Uh, but I mean, the first, also, the first one, right? You have. Uh, can you go back? The first one was. More. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is. This is this yeah, quite this. more. Yeah, okay. So it <laughs> Another problem is also to, to know that. Uh, so you previously had to uh, compute the measurement yes. and then allocate the You don't know the movie before. Yeah, you, know, you, you have to know the movie before. <laughs> okay. There is a question. Yeah. Sorry, uh, what are you plotting there? Uh, the coding time? Uh, this is uh, the frame. Yeah, and, uh, and this is the computational time to generate uh, the frame. OK. In a millisecond? This is in microseconds. Yeah. So what the user wants is just the response time. So uh, response time, of course, the user wants the frame to be produced at a certain time. And now the problem is how to pass from uh, this response time to the scale data parameters. Now let's start from the beginning. We have the period. Uh, well, of course, the period is just the response time. Uh, we have a fixed frame rate, which is constant. And so uh, we can put the period equal to the response time. Now for the relative data, uh, the user wants the frame to be produced before the next activation time, but the user doesn't care uh, on if the frame is produced at the beginning of the time slot or at the ending of the time slot. So uh, he just wants to be produced uh, in time. So it must be, it can be equal to the period. Now, the bandwidth. For the bandwidth, uh, well, <laughs> this is the real problem. So uh, you can, for instance, use some 
uh, tracing tool to detect uh, the, all the paths and the possible computational times in a statistical way, and then adjust the bandwidth in, by your decision. So you can perform an optimistic decision, by, and then you will obtain a low quality of service. But uh, the bandwidth decision can be uh, resource driven. So you can adjust the bandwidth uh, based on how resources you have. Uh, or it can be pessimistic. So you can, for instance, use the worst case execution time. And you will obtain, of course, the best quality of service. But it's just a waste of resources. So you are over-provisioning, probably. Why is it a waste? Huh? Why is it a waste? The, the process is faster, but it's sooner than the CPU is moving. The yeah. problem is is the, the problem is that if you have a task with uh, mm, statistically low computational requirements and uh, for a particular reason you have a, a peak of request, then uh, you take the worst case execution, execution time as the peak. And then you, you allocate resources. Yeah, but okay, but you it's finished, it's finished. I mean, yeah, but you have the sum of all the reservation on the system. So if you just yeah, you can go with one to just one single task, but then you will scale just one task on your machine. So you have to be conservative for other tasks. Yeah, of course, if you have some background uh, yeah. task, you can use always the, the available bandwidth. But it's a waste with respect to the others. Maybe you can mention the admission control. Yeah. Yeah, so of course. That's the yeah. problem. It will not allow to create other yes. uh, deadline tasks if you uh, dimension, overdimension the budget. Yeah, well, or at least uh, when uh, the activation is performed. Uh, yes, activation uh, admission control. So at this point, uh, the possible solution can be to da dynamic, dynamically manage, dynamically man manage uh, these uh, uh, parameters. These. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, this, uh, this bandwidth, and uh, it can be driven by the computational times required during the past, during the history of the computational times. So it just becomes um, a feedback loop, feedback loop controller. But uh, if I adjust the parameters uh, in a so dynamic way, isn't it just like removing the, uh, the CBS from scale deadline? Well, uh, Yes and no. Yes and no, because first of all, uh, you need time to uh, read parameters and adjust the, the bandwidth based on this stuff. And so in case of a, a transitory, the transitory status is uh, attenuated by this delay. And more of that, uh, in the tools I provide, I have a global controller uh, which mm, gives some fairness between the several tasks. So now let's have a look at, uh, let's put all together and have a look at what I developed. I developed uh, basically three tools. Two tools are part, the first two tools are part of the architecture. We have a kernel module, uh, a daemon, and a simple configuration GUI. Uh, this is the highest level uh, block diagram of my architecture. As uh, we can see, there is a feedback loop con controller. Um, we can start from this get deadline. There is the kernel module that retrieves the mm, parameters from the parameters, the computation times of the task from scat deadline. It uh, places them in file system. Uh, then uh, this is the daemon. The daemon reads those parameters, computes all the uh, parameters for scat deadline, and sends the, these parameters to, to the scheduler. Now, for the daemon, uh, what the daemon provides is, uh, um, is this. So it creates a folder inside the proc scale deadline and a file uh, for each process uh, running on scale deadline. And uh, those files contain uh, the um, data in this format. Uh, we have the two first two columns that are the timestamp time step of the of the, of the sample, then the value of the sample in uh, microseconds. And uh, uh, the last column is just uh, a hint on uh, uh, if the 
the task exceeded or not the bandwidth. Now let's have a fast uh, look at the implementation. I use the kernel probes. Uh, it's not so elegant as solution, but uh, I had to find a trade-off be between the modularity and uh, the elegancy. Uh, so uh, putting directly the hands on the kernel would be not a good idea. And I used J probes that also provide uh, the possibility of retrieving the parameters passed to the functions. And I used uh, these parameters to gather the uh, statistics. I attached my probes to uh, those two functions. And then the model have, has also a uh, function for getting the data from the, from the file system, uh, files that are simply sequential files. Now, the daemon. Uh, uses for uh, the communication with the user, uh, the user, user which uh, has to be a super user, uh, uses the DBus interface, uh, providing uh, this uh, um, this interface, this interface address, and uh, this address has those uh, functions, those methods. Uh, so we can receive uh, uh, the path to an XML file for configuration. Uh, the daemon can also uh, directly launch my executable and uh, uh, or mm, retrieve the process ID of an already existing um, process uh, and start to uh, manage it with the SCAD data and, and uh, uh, all this stuff. Now this is a simple XML uh, configuration file. Uh, it simply puts in execution uh, the executable uh, with those parameters and applies uh, those scale data and parameters to, uh, to the task. Now, for the implementation, uh, as you have seen from the previous slide, I have also a, a local controller, not a local controller, but a local controller for each task. Uh, and this is uh, a simple thread that, uh, uh, in a cyclical way, uh, performs the following operations. It retrieves the um, data uh, from the file system. Then it computes uh, some, um, some uh, instruction. Uh, it uh, just runs the control algorithm and uh, calculates the next utilization factor. And then, uh, with this utilization factor, uh, it is sent to, to, the, uh, to the global controller. Uh, at the current implementation, the control algorithm um, I developed is just to, um, is just to take the window of the, the last uh, parameters obtained by uh, the execution, and then to uh, take the maximum of these values. So uh, with this algorithm, uh, you can, for instance, uh, set the window at the maximum uh, maximum size to obtain the worst the last worst, worst case execution time that have been uh, produced, or uh, if you use a smaller window, uh, then mm, it is much more varying. Now, for the controller global, uh, there is still some mathematics. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's pretty simple. So here is uh, another loop that performs. First of all. Uh, and a, something like an admission control. Uh, this is uh, just the sum of the utilization factors of the dynamic tasks. And then it's sum, it, it is summed to the sum of the utilization factors of the fixed tasks. And it is checked to be uh, less than or equal to the bandwidth, uh, the whole bandwidth of SCAD data. Uh, then uh, if it's... Um, um, <laughs> if it's OK, OK, we can pass the parameters. Otherwise, we have to shrink in somehow um, the parameters to put all together to make the, the system scalable. So uh, I, I decided to give higher priority to the fixed tasks. So uh, the thing that is shrinked uh, are just the utilization factors of the uh, dynamic tasks. Uh, and they are, they are shrinked in a fair way uh, by using the spring with no land constraints algorithm. So you can imagine the, the tasks uh, as springs, and you are just applying a force to reduce 
its size and uh, uh, the stiffness of each spring, spring task, uh, is just the, the period of the tasks. So now that uh, the tasks are shrink and they can, the system uh, is now uh, one more time schedulable, uh, the scale deadline parameters are uh, best to scale deadline. At the end, this simple GUI will just generate XML files starting from uh, a simple form. At this point, uh, you want to know uh, if the system uh, developed really works. And so this is uh, what is traced by uh, a simple movie. And this is the first result. I'm using a global controller with uh, one second of period. Uh, and uh, the window size of 50, 15, 50 samples. And those are the results. Uh, this, um, this plot shows that uh, there are maybe uh, four uh, dead and misses. And, uh, uh, but it's about. 50 samples means that you, you, you check the, the computation every 50 frames. No, uh, it means uh, that I'm checking the last 50, uh, 50 uh, times of uh, computations, the so times of the last 50, 50 jobs. Over a wheel of 50 last time. Okay. Um, well, uh, I think it's a quite good result. Uh, this is, um, this movie uh, is, uh, is playing alone with uh, nothing else on the system. In this other case, uh, I have the same movie uh, played uh, together with uh, several different uh, uh, tasks scheduled by SCAD deadline uh, in a fixed, uh, with a fixed uh, uh, parameters. And uh, the deadline are, are just moved. Maybe later I, I will explain why. Uh, but there are, are still a few that, uh, that I misses. And this is quite also better results. Um, I performed this benchmark by running uh, the same uh, movie uh, together with uh, a web browser with uh, so many, uh, so many uh, YouTube uh, movies opened. Uh, so many, I mean, uh, about uh, 20, 20 movies. And so uh, I plan to make a practical session, but uh, there is no time. So maybe later on the hands-on hands -on session, we'll show you how to use it. So these are the repositories. So if somebody wants to, somebody is curious or want to develop the um, better stuff, it's welcome. Those are the references, and those are my references. OK, thank you. Let's Yeah, so what happens if you take out the global manager and that the case is do this individually for their own? So, for example, you have M player only analyze its own time and try to adapt it to uh, correct its own utilization. And you can see that, of course, by, by sampling a few V-frames, because V-frames are the most expensive to decode. If it's alone, there's no problem. Uh, the problem uh, arises when there are many tasks running, of course, because uh, the controller global is just uh, uh, performing uh, something like an admission control. So, uh, but, but still, I mean, if you do it alone and you make it a little bit free so that it, it goes up faster than it goes down, um, you still get relatively good um, quality of service. And, and other applications um, might still be able to run the cushion mode entirely over to make it. Yeah. Okay. You have to trust the application to do like the right thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the global, you can do it slightly better. I think, but it might still be useful to also do it with the application. Yeah. Okay. In the current application, uh, the problem is that if I completely remove the global controller, uh, it also it is removed also the the delay. So um, the period uh, of the of the local controller is the same of the period of the, is the response time. So uh, if I modify uh, the scale data parameters too fast, 
that's good that then, uh, uh, doesn't have the time to perform all, all uh, his um, adaptations. So uh, the system will become uh, unstable. Yeah. That, that, that could be fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can increase the 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 time of the period. Luca? Yeah, yeah. Two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, you are using only the amount of time consumed during the period that the feedback value? Uh, yes. Not the scheduling deadline. No, sorry. Uh, you are not using the scheduling deadline as uh, the feedback value. I'm using the time consumed okay. uh, by the task so, during the period. Yeah. So basically, you try to allocate the, ta the budget, the runtime, so that it's larger than the average uh, consumed time. Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, my question is, uh, uh, when I tried to do this in the past, uh, I noticed that uh, in some cases, the scheduling deadline can be postponed a lot because you have some spike in the execution time. And then, uh, if you do not monitor the scheduling deadline, but only the exec execution times, you risk to have this uh, large difference between the current time and the scheduling deadline, which is not able to recover. Yeah, uh, and it, it, this is because uh, it's in a software time application, because I can miss uh, uh, some deadlines. But uh, yeah, uh, this spike uh, is quite large. So the the problem is still alive. Okay. So one suggestion would be to monitor both the execution time and the scheduling deadline. If you read the uh, uh, paper, the paper about the feedback, uh, you will see that both the two values can be used together, and in that case, we will be able to recover much uh, faster from this kind of. Thing. Yeah. The problem is that I'm. Uh, it's a kernel module, so yeah. I cannot directly uh, act on uh, the scheduling. You can read it. You but can you can read, read the deadline. You read the yeah, okay. Yeah, it can but be. Uh, my question to your graphs. Um, what's your graph? Why is the response time, the desired response time, on the yellow line, uh, the, the red line? Why is it in the um, microseconds range? For a video, that seems a bit. I um, is just changing the measurement to unit. Yeah, right. But um, nanoseconds uh, by ten to the power of five is like uh, hundred microseconds. Maybe. Right. Uh, Which means <laughs> maybe it's just a typo error. <laughs> no, actually, here it was microseconds until until last time. I think it was it was with me. in all those slides you had the microseconds. It not picking yeah. up quite. Uh, no, maybe it's more appropriate. Like the same. Any other questions around? Yes, sure. What could be the origin of the spike, actually? Uh, Can you read it? What could be the origin of the spike, actually? Uh, it is just because uh, I am providing not enough resources. So uh, the bandwidth uh, is, uh, is completely filled. And, and then the execution time is postponed. So the frame has to wait another period to be produced. As the throttling mechanism. Um, you might want to take a look at the work of my colleague who used workload metrics to predict uh, execution time. Might be more interesting than just using a sliding window for the last few uh, last few time intervals. I'm not sure if it's directly applicable because he wrote his own scheduler because back when he did it, the schedule time was not yet ready. But might be more interesting as a, as a prediction me uh, mechanism, especially for video where you have high time variations based on how the brain is encoded. Yeah, so I can give you can send you a link later. Yeah, uh, we can use yours, so we can use model predictive control, or we can use, for instance, some statistical approach. Uh, uh, it is uh, an open issue. If you want, you can plug. Uh, it is quite modular, so you can plug your control algorithm and, uh, and run it. I was the measurement of the jitter at the beginning. It was under normal primary jitter. I can't give you. Uh, no, the, the first, for the first, uh, the first thing you showed, it this was one? The first one. Like, this one, for example. This one, a priority, I'm running. 
The prior no, it's um, it's yeah, no. scheduled by Linux. Uh, no, not yeah, normal priority. Normal yeah, normal priority. priority. And you're just using task uh, or something. Um, just uh, the time consumed by the task. Yeah. So yeah, so it's, it doesn't matter what scheduler you run this on. It's just measuring the time the task took. This is also not. Uh, this is not uh, obtained by the kernel module, but uh, directly um, by patching uh, the the player, and it is the output of uh, the uh, the player itself. It it is just the time uh, required to produce the frame. In fact, on the x x axis we have the frame number. <laughs> Okay, so why does the decoding take exactly the frame rate as a time? Did you measure the waiting time until the frame is rendered as well? Uh, this is a <laughs> nice question. You might want to look into that. I have the same mistake. Yeah, it should be. It should, it should take quite time. less. Uh, Thanks, too. But, mm, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just like the frame rate. Yeah, it one is, It is a. Uh, it will be one. Maybe it's a case because it's in microseconds and. Uh, <laughs> 33 milliseconds, so it looks like 29 frames per second or something like that. Uh, no, no, because it's uh, nanoseconds. Like, okay. like, like in this one, uh, there, there is a, a switch. Okay. Go back to, to that example, the difference between the, the average value and the maximum is so small that you may, maybe by using the old product, Okay. The, problem. the problem is that, for instance, here we have a little spike. Yes, but it's a very little spike. Yeah, average value. Yeah. Average value. If you look at this, scale, I, mean, I would expect but that the bandwidth here. Maybe you just cut the picture here. That spike is much higher than uh, the. Um, unfortunately, not. Yeah, the, the, picture, the picture has. I mean, not if been you run any adaptation, adaptation here, sorry. it should be kind of. Here you have two spikes with the, exactly the same thing. I think you just got yeah, the a picture. Yeah, I'm not sure about it. And that would explain uh, the, the results in the next. Uh, the problem is, is still that uh, if I have, for that, let's suppose that those spikes are uh, at the same height. Uh, if, if I say that from the start, if I from the start, uh, I can use, for instance, these as a bandwidth. Oh, just later I find higher. this one and I get a spike. And then you leave it there. No, because it's dynamic. And yeah, if I use a, if that's I use a that's the point, it doesn't need to be dynamic if it's so stable like this. Like yeah, but because you know, uh, this is in the future. For a certain application, if I'm here, yeah. this is in the future. And I don't know that this pipe will, will arise. I will bring the future of time down. If I hide this part, you don't know that uh, what will come in the future. It's a, a certain application you have. It's not a histogram of. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have to. It's very you narrow. Have this in this case, it's so narrow that probably <laughs> allocated for the worst case is. Yeah, I mean, but uh, it took uh, considerations of that because you have the, the global, uh, let's say, global measure, uh, sorry, fixed uh, reservation, so you can use that in uh, with better with dynamic one. So yeah, probably in this case, case is more, yeah, probably in this case, one. You can use it. Uh, <laughs> I try to solve this problem in Scandal. Yeah, sure. Let's see if I a bit more. Have you performed some uh, experiments to measure the response time without scattered line? Do I have a, uh, the same uh, graph that you compare? Because this one is just the execution time. The, one, the ones after are measuring the deadline miss. So, have you ever tried to compare without scattered line and scattered line for scattered uh. No, it's uh, the other comparison, and the problem is uh, simply related to the bandwidth. So, uh, in the other cases, uh, there's no bandwidth. So, well, no, just to well, if you use another scheduler, then 
open your browser with the fancy YouTube video to see how much time you have using another scheduler. Just to have a comparison to see how much better it is to use a scheduler without thinking about uh, the management of the bandwidth. Just no, uh, to see the response time. I have not yet performed these, uh, these, these measurements. I was just curious to see the, uh, the comparison of performance. We can do it uh, like later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I see it. Yeah. <laughs> One more. Sorry, uh, this is uh, far away from uh, my um, area. Maybe it's a uh, stupid question. But uh, I wonder if um, you would solve the whole problem if you set the policy on people. Mm. Why? Uh, but if you change your, your scheduling policy of, uh, on people, you, you, would have, uh, you don't have to pass your deadline uh, adaptively. You have to. You know, I, I don't know if. But, yeah, but more what if you are. If, I, if I'm not the first one, yeah. <laughs> there is the problem. Yeah. yeah, if you are the highest priority task. Yeah. yeah, but if you're not alone, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't care. You yeah, do you don't care. Yeah, how about it? Yeah, also, you can use the maximum bandwidth if you're yes, alone. Yes, if you're alone, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. No other question. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we measure the success of a speaker, but then I'm not right? Yeah, by far, the success. Okay, we can set the exact.